Hi guys, welcome to Elixir Tutorial Part 3. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. So today we're going to build a toy chat application and we're going to use this application to demonstrate what gen server is and what supervisors are. So gen server and supervisor are both modules that were supplied by Erlang and the OTP which comes with Erlang. OTP stands for Open Telecom Platform. Erlang was originally written for telephone stuff like telephone switchboards, but this is still pertinent to servers and other things, especially in networking and distributed systems. All right, so let's create our file. We're going to say mix new chat, and this will create a chat folder with us with the basic skeleton of our Elixir file. Let's open it up in Sublime Text. So here's our chat program, and we want to create a new file inside the lib folder. Our new file will be called server.ex and inside of it we want to say def module chat.server. So this module is going to use gen server. So we're actually going to say use gen server. Now what gen server is, is a, it's basically just an abstraction with a set of special functions that help us define how we can create detached processes to take on module functionality. So like our calculator app used a loop function to iterate through and to identify the messages that we were sending it, gen server makes this process a lot easier. To create a basic gen server module, you want to create a simple function called start link and the start link function will invoke gen server dot start link. And inside of this start link function, you'll pass in the module name and then the initial state that you want to set. We can actually replace this chat.server right here with an atom called module. And this is an Elixir thing. So this is just a nice little piece of syntactic sugar that we can use. Basically what this is saying is it's saying, okay, take the chat.server module and spin up a process with all of the attributes of it. You have to remember that with Elixir, programming is mainly just talking to and from processes. So with the start link function, we need to create a quote unquote response that comes from the processes side. So if you think of it like uh, client and server, so for example, this start link function will start on the client side and then our next function will start on the server side or it will be what is called a callback function. To respond to start link, we're going to create a function called init and this init function will take in our state. So we're going to call our state messages and then init will just return a tuple of okay and then the messages. So when we invoke start link, it will spin up a process and it will return a tuple of okay and then the process ID and then this init function will fire and it will set the state inside of the process. So now we want to be able to actually get the state from our process. So we're going to create a function called get messages and in here we just need to pass the process ID and we're just going to call gen server dot call. This is going to take in the process ID and then a little atom called get messages. And then on the server side, we want to have another function, which is called handle call. And this is going to take in the get messages atom first. And then it's going to have a variable called from, and we're putting an underscore before this because we're not going to actually use it inside of the function, at least not directly. And then we want to pass our state inside of here as well. We're going to create a tuple in here. It's just going to say reply. It's going to have the state twice afterwards. We want to get the state from our process. So we pass in the process ID to this function and then gen server calls that process and sends this message to the process. Then the process fires this handle call function and it takes in the atom. So it basically does a pattern match of these two atoms. Then it uses this from call to identify where the uh, message is actually being passed from. In our case, it'd be coming from the IEX process. And it's using this, the messages state, to account for whether or not we're changing the state of the uh, function in this function, which we're not. And then the reply here has the response state, so the state that we're going to see as a response, and then the new state. In this case, it's going to be the same value because we're not actually changing the state in this function. But in some other cases, it's not uncommon to actually create multiple states. So gen server call is actually mostly used for setting and getting state. So this is important because the gen server.call function is actually a synchronous call. So it's not concurrent. 
if we do not get this handle call function to call back, it will actually stop running the code. So it's a blocking call. So we generally use the gen server call. If we want something that we need a direct response for. In this case, getting the state is the reason why we used a non-concurrent function. This is not very interesting because we're just passing back and forth an empty linked list. So let's create a function that allows us to modify that linked list. So we're creating a function called add message. We're passing in the process ID and then of course the message that we want to add to the list. This is going to call genserver.cast instead of call. And inside of this, we're going to pass in the PID and then a tuple of add message as an atom. And then the message that we want to actually pass into the state. Then we're going to create a handle cast function. Now handle cast needs the add message. So the atom that we've created here needs to be in our handle cast function in the beginning of the tuple. And then we want to have the message that we're passing back into here. So the new piece of state that we're passing in here, and this is actually our message without an S. So MSG, and then we also want to pass in all of the states. So the entire linked list, so MSGS. And then in this case, we're going to actually return a tuple of no reply. And then we're going to take our linked list and cons the message onto the messages. So basically we're putting the message that we're, that we wanted to add to our list in the front of our list. All right. So this is a completed gen server module. So let's run it inside of IEX and take a look at what we've got. So we run IEX s mix, and this will compile our two files and then generate the chat app. To actually start up the process, we call chat.server.startlink, and this will actually return our process ID and an okay tuple. So we also, we want to bind that process ID to PID. So we're gonna call it again, and we're gonna start a link. So now we have it bound to our process ID. So now we can run our other functions as well. We can say chat server.get messages, and we can invoke it with just calling the PID on it. And as you can see, this returns back a empty list. Now we can set a message in here. So say we want to put hello in here. We just pass the PID and then the string of hello. And of course, my mistake, it's not called set message. It's called add message. And there we go. See, it returns just a little atom that says okay. And that's because this cast here is actually a asynchronous call. So it's not a blocking call. And generally we use it not because we do not actually need a response in this case. So all we're doing is changing the state. We do not want a response. We just want it to tell us that this function did in fact run, but we don't need it to show us what the state looks like. So let's add something else. So for example, how are you? And then let's get the state back. So we're gonna call get messages again. And as you can see, how are you is before hello inside of this new list and we've added state to our list. All right, so now let's create a supervisor. So we're going to create a new file here. This file is going to be called supervisor.ex and our module is going to be called chat.supervisor. And like gen server, we just call use supervisor to add the supervisor properties to our module. Supervisors are important because they allow us to create processes which watch our processes. And then if say our process dies, for example, say our chat process just goes down, our supervisor will try to restart it. So in here we need to create a start link function. And in here we're going to call supervisor.startlink. And this is going to look very much like our gen server start link. So we're just going to pass in that atom of module as well as an empty list. And the empty list is sort of the state of this supervisor as well. We're also going to create an init function. But in this case, we don't need to actually know what the state is because we're going to create our own state inside of this. So we're going to create a variable called children and our children variable is going to take in a list and this list is going to have a function inside of it called worker and this will define our chat server as our worker and it will also pass in the initial state of that chat server. We want this module here to be the worker that we're looking at with this supervisor. Now to actually make the supervisor look at this chat server module we're just going to call it the supervise method and inside of it we're going to pass that children variable that we created and then we're going to pass the strategy that we want it to use and in this case we want it to use one for one now this strategy basically means 
that if one of our processes dies, the supervisor will automatically try to spin it up. So if we had multiple processes, if one dies, it won't affect the other ones. Then this will try to spin up the dead process. Of course, we have multiple different strategies that we could use. There is a strategy called one for all. And what that will do is if one of the processes dies, it will try it will basically restart all of the processes that it's overlooking and then there's another one called rest for one and what will happen is when a process dies it will restart that process and then any process that was activated after it so that's sort of a strategy that's based off of when the processes are started and finally we have another one called simple one for one and this is more of a dynamic way it allows us to define when we can't want the processes to be reset and so on and so forth so this is not enough so now we need to change our actual server.ex to make this supervisor work the way that we actually change this is we're going to actually come in here and we're going to add another argument to our gen server.start link and this is going to be the name and in this case we just want to associate our process with this chat room atom so rather than passing around a process id we can just hard code chat room into these other functions so if we take this and we change the PID into chat room, then we won't actually have to pass anything to our get message function. And we can actually replace the PID here as well with chat room. The downside to doing this, however, is that we can only have one process of this type because it's being called by a atom instead of a process ID. So let's run this inside of our REPL. So to run everything, we want to call our supervisor. So we're going to say chat.supervisor start link. And this will return with the tuple and the process ID that it started on. So it's run the init function, which set up the children and then supervised the children. But it also spun up the chat.server. So we don't actually have to run the chat.server start link function directly. If we do, it'll fail. As you can see here, it gives us an error and says it's already been started on this process ID. So now we can also just call the get message function and we don't have to pass it anything. It'll just give us the state because it knows exactly which process we're referring to. And we can add messages. We don't even need to use parentheses because it only takes in one argument. Just say we want to add hello. And again, how are you doing? And we can get those messages back as well. We can also use a little function called process where is and then we can type in the chat room atom and this will return the process id that this process is on and we can use this to actually kill our process so if we want to kill our process we just pipe in the process id into a function called process.exit and then we pass a kill atom into this and this will kill our process and as you can see it returns a boolean of true which means that this process was killed however if we check the where is it will actually give us a new process id because our supervisor automatically restarted the process so of course our state is now different if we get our messages it's now an empty list again and the reason for that is because we don't have a database to actually back up the data so now that we finish our application Let's make it so that this application will automatically run when we run mix. So we can say mods. And then we pass in a tuple with the chat module namespace. So the chat will be our entry point. And then we pass in an empty list. So we have no uh, modifications that we want to make to the chat. So now let's set up our chat.ex file. So let's delete all of this boilerplate that was built into it. We want to use the application module. And we're going to create a little function just called start. And this will pass a variable called type and arguments. And inside of this, we'll just call chat.supervisor start link so now if we run iex s mix this will compile our file and it will automatically start our application so we don't need to run chat.start in fact if we do this will just come back with an error but one of the cool things that we can do due to some of the tools that come with elixir is we can actually open up a gui that allows us to look at how our processes are shaped so this is called observer start and i spelled observer wrong so here's our gui and as you can see we can go to applications and it has all the elixir applications that are currently running so we have mix we have our logger we have a little kernel kernel that's running we have iex that's running 
we have Elixir itself, and we have our chat application. This is taking up three processes and then a process called chat room. And we can come in here and we can actually look at all the processes and we can actually kill any of the ones that we want. So if we want to kill the chat room, we can do that. And as you can see, even though we've killed it, it automatically restarts because of the supervisor. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was sufficiently helpful for Gen Server and for Supervisor. If you like this video, then feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel Feel free to comment on the video and if you dislike it then by all means you can downvote us as much as you like. Alright guys have a good night.